has been a huge lack of rigor here and probably even a failure of journalistic standard by the CBC in this whole story. I was able to debunk the whole thing myself based solely on material found online. It didn't take me long to find out who this man really was. Robbery, assault, rape, scam, and fraud. How could they have been so careless with these details? It is negligence, unprofessionalism, or possibly even deliberate. This is my final video in a three-part series on the lies propagated by the CBC regarding the story of a man allegedly exploited by the Freedom Convoy in Ottawa. You can see my previous report at mediafactcheck.ca. Since the story was published without little to no verification or investigation, I immediately felt that something was fishy. Today, I'm closing the file on Martin Engelhardt, the man in question, and I am so glad to be done with him. The CBC did a very good job. Why? They used a self-proclaimed former scam artist to attack the convoy that went to Ottawa for nearly four weeks to protest the lockdown. And scam artists are not my words. They are Engelhardt's. Take a listen. And the thing is, is like everybody's like saying I'm a scam artist. I was a scam artist and I don't admit, I, I don't deny it. I don't deny that I lied to a lot of people, but I was lost in my way. And then instead of stealing and ended up in jail, I kind of, you know, made up story and it's okay. A man with the long criminal story who's done some very shady thing in the past and as I have seen is still doing them to this day. The media around the world following CBC's lead portrayed him as a poor Kenley victim of the convoy because they just so hate the convoy. But who are the real victim in this old story? If you still want the truth, follow our you new website, mediafactcheck.ca. And please share the information widely to inform others of all the misinformation the mainstream media is spreading in society. I have been investigating Martin Engelhardt past for nearly two weeks now with far fewer resources than what the large state-owned corporation we call the CBC has. This point out how much they insist on maintaining a fixed line of thinking to follow their narrative while willfully omitting crucial information that the public has the right to know if they want to be able to have a name form opinion about the story that Hart presented. Let's start with what the CBC reported. That Martin Engelhardt's bank account was still frozen due to the repercussion of his partaking in Ottawa Freedom Convoy. Like so many other innocent people who had their bank account frozen for holding the wrong opinion on lockdown and vaccine. First, let's mention that Engelhardt has more than one bank account in Canada. He confirmed that what he had told CBC was false when he called me. Listen to this. Hey, okay, I have a bank conversation with my bank that happened, okay, two days ago. Yeah, but your bank is not frozen. It's oh, just on hold because of fraud. What is what he said to you? That means it's not frozen. Yeah, but it doesn't matter. I can't receive e-transfer and everything, but that's not the point. You heard it, right? His account was not frozen because of the convoy, but because he had a fraudulent money transfer, and this amount is currently being held for a fraud investigation. Another lie debunked. Don't forget that he is also receiving welfare from two provinces 
at the same time. The CBC had the evidence on their side, but they choose to leave it out because it didn't fit the image of the poor victim they were trying to portray of him. They had the same screenshot that showed multiple welfare payments from different provinces that I have. As for Mr. Engelhardt's car, CBC say, Engelhardt's Dutch caravan was also says. It's remained impounded and Engelhardt say he cannot afford to get it back. In a video, Engelhardt floated his ticket on camera along with a new car whose license plate I could see. Following an exchange with the police officer, the officer told me that Engo Hart was not longer allowed to drive. I went to the Ottawa Ministry of Transportation website and did some research. Martin Engo Hart has not been allowed to drive for several years now. Is that why his vehicle, which was already in poor condition according to many, was towed away? How could he get that vehicle back without a license? It's impossible unless he did it illegally, of course. It was probably more convenient to buy another one with all the donation he received since his car was due to be replaced soon anyway. Another lies, the bunk. Since his younger days, Martin Engelhardt has been an unstable person. The CBC had made a report on his disappearance in 2018, specifying that we should fear for his well-being and health. So CBC home archive show that he was troubled. Several people report to me that they had known Engelhardt since before the convoy and that he was collecting donation people were giving him after airing his story. This isn't the first time I've heard of Martin Joseph. In fact, the first time Martin Joseph came on my radar was two years ago when he started posting in Facebook groups looking for help getting back to St. Rupert after having lost a job due to COVID. At that point, he had also spent his entire life savings. There was a Facebook group that was created at that point in time in order to be able to help Martin out. That group still exists. I am still a part of that group. And boy, oh boy, there are people definitely questioning whether or not he was even sincere back then because a lot of money was pulled together in order to get him back to Prince Rupert. Many people have given thousands of dollars to this man. But who is Martin Engelhardt? Seeing that Mr. Engelhardt seemed unstable and fraudulent, and that he often made suicide threat to people in the convoy and even to me. I investigated a little further while making sure not to trigger anything in him. I discovered on the BANQ digital website an article from the newspaper Le Quotidien dating from 2003. Here are the main line of the article in question. Martin Engelhardt, 23 years old, was sentenced yesterday to two years in prison for a theft of $60 from a business in Chicoutimi. The recidivist had asked through his lawyer for the possibility of doing community services as part of his sentence, which the judge did not accept. Despite his young age, Engelhardt had just completed most of a previous four-year sentence for the kidnapping and rape of a 14-year-old girl in 1999, while he knowingly had AIDS. Upon his release from the penitentiary on May 23, Hengo Hart was subject to 15 conditions, including maintaining peace because of the danger he posed to society. Martin Engelhardt, who will soon turn 42 in April, was 23 years old back in 2003. It was at that moment that 
I went to the Quebec City Courthouse to confirm that it was indeed the same man. Mr. Engelhardt has a pretty extensive criminal and penal record. In Quebec alone, his record is quite impressive. The two trials indicated in the 2003 article in Le Quotidien do appear in his file. Imagine his rape victim, who was only a teenager at the time, seeing his assailant pretending to be the poor victim disillusioned by the truckers' convoy, and on top of that, seeing people giving him money following a report broadcasted nationally by a mainstream media outlet. How does that make her feel? There has been a huge lack of rigor here, and probably even a failure of journalistic standard by the CBC in this whole story. I was able to debunk the whole thing myself based solely on material found online. It didn't take me long to find out who this man really was. Robbery, assault, rape, scam, and fraud. How could they have been so careless with these details? It is negligence, unprofessionalism, or possibly even deliberate. Several of our upcoming story will investigate the journalistic rigor of the mainstream media. If like me, you want to know the truth, don't forget to share this video and visit mediafactcheck.ca if you want more report like this one. On that website, you can also donate generously to help us continue this valuable investigation and in our independent journalism. This was Alexa for Urban News. We did try to reach Martin Engelhard to give him the opportunity to explain himself and as well to answer to our question. But so far, we didn't have any answer from his part. So if you want to help us for our journalism and our investigation, you can do so at mediafactcheck.ca. But also, if you want to please yourself, go to rubennewsstore.com. And on this website, we have really amazing t-shirt, uh, hoodie, and other merch that you can buy for yourself or for your loved ones. And that contribute to help us out. You can use my code Alexa 10. Thanks.